Hey everyone, it's time for part three. Now, once you have all your blocks stitched, I want you to do about an eighth inch stay stitch around the edge of each block all the way around. And that'll help when you're sewing these together so these aren't flipping away from the foundation. So just take about an eighth of an inch in so it's in your quarter inch when you're sewing together so you won't see it. So make sure it's not out too far, but all the way around all 16 blocks. Now I went ahead and stitched these all together because it's a no brainer to stitch blocks together. But what I want to show you is the back side. So once you're putting these together, you want to press these seams open the best you can. And what I mean by that is sometimes where there's two or three wools coming together, it's a little hard to press that open, but just do the best you can. They'll kind of wiggle around a little bit, but it won't matter. So as open as you can. So the short seams are open and then the long seams are open here. So see how it gets kind of funny there? All right. So once your whole quilt top is together, then we're going to work on borders. And that's what we're going to teach in this episode now is to talk about borders. Now, I have stitched three of the four borders already. And I did it a couple of weeks ago. So hopefully I won't forget anything between now and then. But you want to lay out your borders according to your picture and your directions. Make sure you read all of those. Now here is the long sides of the, um, the border. So these are the long sides that are going to go on the five blocks coming down. I did, I thought I was going to be smart and, you know, oversize them, but it really doesn't need to have this extra on there. So do cut those foundation strips the size that the pattern says. And then I'm going to roll these up and I'm going to show you on the one last one that I have to stitch. I didn't stitch the four corners on or the two corners on the top and bottom one. All right, so this is kind of weird here. All right, this is this, this is the one that I have the corners on, but I just kind of, once you put it on your quilt, you need to do a little bit of auditioning to make sure that this triangle and this square are not the same fabrics. So this is gonna get cut right here, and then this square is gonna go on, but I didn't do that yet. I'll save that for later. All right, so now the last border here that needs to be sewn is right here. All right, so I have it kind of haphazardly pinned on here so I wouldn't lose them. There's my square, there's my square. So that's how you do this. So this is not gonna be pretty. This is not easy to do um, one at a time. So you need to find your center one. So this blue one here is my center. So I'm gonna make sure that that blue one, see how I have a crease right here in the center of my foundation. I'm gonna fold those back. I'm gonna put that one, find a little center of that one, and you're gonna lay that one right on the edge there and put a little pin in it. Okay, and then I'll put a couple pins in the top one here. Away from the stitching, you don't want them close. So then I'm gonna take this one and I'm just gonna flop it back onto that triangle, just like that. Put a couple pins in it. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of roll this up for now. Or if you have a camera phone, you can take a picture of your whole border laid out and then you can just look at your picture to decide what goes next. Okay, so I'm gonna fold this in here too as well. 
because I don't need that all over the place. I'm gonna take one of these big pins and pin it as best as I can. Okay, so now, depending on what kind of machine you have, you can use a walking foot or whatever you think you need to go through this. I have a Juki and it's kind of a semi-industrial machine, so it really will go over these pieces no problem and feed them nicely. I'm just gonna put this into my quarter inch right there. And I can stitch with a little bit bigger stitch than what I normally do. I probably said that in an earlier video, but like I said, it's been a couple weeks, so I'm just gonna start. to my ironing surface. That out of the way, take the pins out, and I'm gonna take my iron and press this in place. Now this navy one is next. And like I said, you don't have to have this all on here. As a matter of fact, I think I'm just gonna pile them over to the side here in the order they go on. So they're out of my way, but yet still in order. Okay, that will help me. It's not like we do a trial run of this. <laughs> okay, so now this navy one goes on next. I'm gonna flip it over. So you, you place it like so, and then you flip it over and match up the notches. Put a couple pins in if you wish so it doesn't move. Back to the machine. So I'm just gonna stop here for a second and just show you now that we have all of these together here. Do you see how I have my quarter inch seam there? That's gonna hit that triangle just perfect. So I'm gonna continue to stitch these together and not talk about it because it's the same thing that I just did for these two triangles. All right, be back in a minute. All right, so now we have this whole border stitched and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the quilt, lay it out and measure your borders and start putting the borders onto the quilt center. Okay, it's time to add a border to our long side of the quilt. So I have my quilt laying here and I have the first border here. I have the nice big crease here where the center of this is. And then I folded my quilt in half and found the center of that. Now this is different than normal patchwork where uh, everything is thin cotton. We have to kind of 
let go of some of the rules of quilting. Like normally I would probably trim this to the exact size as this, but I wanna just make sure everything's good. So sometimes when you trim and trim, you make a little boo-boo. So I could, if you want, you could come here and you know go a quarter inch past and trim and go a quarter inch past and trim and make that fit. That's fine too. Or you could just lay this on, pin it, put it on and trim as well. So it's, and trim after you stitch the border on. Whatever way you prefer, will work. And don't worry if, let's say for instance, if this border goes on and your point is off a smidge here, nobody really cares on this type of patchwork. This isn't about being perfect. This is about being scrappy and whimsical and just using what you got and making it work. But we have a hard time with all of our technical quilting skills when it comes to we think that should apply to everything we do. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna just give this border here a trim that's gonna go onto this quilt. Just so it's nice and even. And I'm barely taking off stuff here. But just in case something is hanging off, like that one where I left that extra on there, I'm gonna have to trim that off. All right, so this has got a little bit of a wiggle in it. So we'll see, I'm just gonna trim that off and it's all gonna be okay. All right, so none of that cream will show now. Find my center, flip it there, line those up, and then I'm gonna take my pin and I'm gonna pin that on and I'm gonna slide it over. Now I'm not gonna stretch it. I'm just gonna just lay it on here. Nice, pull that out, pull that out, and just give it a nice little pin on. So I'm gonna pull it toward me. Whoops, that was my rotary cutter. Good thing there was nobody there. A lot of layers here, so I'm just gently matching these up, the top edge here. One on each seam and one in the middle should be sufficient. Now don't try to pull this over, just leave it nice right there. This side here. You can pin down some of those seams, just make them lie open. So now I'm all pinned and now it's time to stitch them. Hey everyone, we're back to finish putting the borders on. So I last left you pinning a border on and I was going to stitch. So I stitched both side borders on, put on the bottom border, and now it's time to stitch the last border. I didn't think I needed to bore you watching me just sew borders on. So the side borders go, go on fairly easily. The top and the bottom borders have the corner squares in them. So I'm gonna show you how to do that and sew this last border on so you know exactly how to do that. All right, so in my border here, I have placed a, pinned my, wool square corners down and I'm just gonna stitch them across here. Now, the reason why I didn't do this before was I wanted to make sure that I didn't have the same fabrics anywhere in the other borders once they went on. So that's why I did not do this already. So I have taken a couple pins, pinned those on, and now I'm just going to stitch those on using a quarter inch seam allowance. 
And hopefully everything goes good because I didn't use this machine yet. <laughs> I did use it yesterday though, so it wasn't been that long. Now on the bottom border, I made the mistake of trimming this off, which it's not really a mistake, but I really want this um, backing on here. So I'm just gonna trim away the wool here, like so. Maybe I can pull that off or I can just cut it here. So do you see how easy it was for me to think I just needed to trim that off? But then I also trimmed my base off here. So I'm just going to lay that over like so, slide it around here and give it a quick little press. All right. So then I do that on the other side, have it all in place. It's been packed away a little bit. It's got a little wrinkle in it, but make sure that that looks good. I think I'm going to move it a little bit. It looks just a little... There. Under the wall. All right. Do the same thing again. Trim this off. that over, give it a press. And when I stitch this, see how I got a little bit, of, it kind of just moved it over a little bit. That'll all get trimmed off later. Don't worry about that. The wool is very forgiving. Okay, so now I found the center of my border. I have the center of my quilt piece here. So now I'm going to match those up. I'm just going to lay those together like that. Bring that together, take out those pins right there. And now I'm going to pin that. And there is a lot of layers here. So this is going to be a little bit of a wrestle. And then what's nice too is if you pin this down here as well. So it doesn't move around on you there. So that's going to stay in place. I'm going to lay that. And you know this is an ideal situation right here, sewing. I would much rather be doing this at my home. And then I'll get that like this. Pin there. I like to pin so I can still sew. So I'll back up my pins just a little bit from the quarter of an inch there. So now this seam right here, I'm gonna tuck that into that one so they nest nicely. My previous seam, I've opened up here the best I could. And you'll know what I mean if you're making this and then you see by the best I could. All right, now just going to get that evenly. Start from the middle, couple pins. Now on the same thing on this side. Line up those two squares. Or seams, not squares, where the square is. Go to the edge. Wow, turned out good. You can trim off that if you wanted to. Now I gotta do this here. Let's do the center first and then in between. to take off my quarter inch foot because I'm going to stitch just a smidge bigger than my scant quarter inch foot just to catch those thicker wools better. All right and I 
unthreaded it, so we'll get that threaded back up. Right. All right, now I'm just going to run it through using the edge of my foot. And what's nice is I can see where my stay stitching is on the edge, so I know kind of where I really need to be, so that helps me. I want to be on that side of that stay stitching. Muslin foundation. see how it turned out. It might have been a good thing that we didn't finish this right up. We've had a heat spell in Wisconsin here. So, all right, so let's see what we got. Oh, got one more pin in there. Take that one out, my center. Got some threads in there. So just go look to make sure you don't see any white or anything like that. Everything looks good. Some more strings. All right, so everything lined up pretty decent. And now I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to press this seam open the best I can. And you can see some, some of the other ones that it's not always the easiest to do, but just do the best you can there to make sure some of that goes on each side. And then I don't think you need to watch me press that, but I want to just show you kind of how, where we're at here with the quilt. Give you a little bit of an idea. And here's what I mean about how I cut that foundation off, that one. So I made sure I did not do it on this one. So now I'm going to trim up any of this foundation away. And it's time to get it 